मंदहासुचिराननाबुज पूजित सुरनरोतमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदनमह विचित श्री हरिकृष्ण महाराज ने जय सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी भगवान स्वामीनारायण और पूज्य गुरु जी ऑल संतो एंड यूडियोटी जय स्वामीनारायण वंस अपॉन अ टाइम इन गडड़ा श्री जी महाराज वॉज सिटिंग इन एन असेंबली एंड इन दट असेंबली देर आर सो मैनी परम हंस एज वेल एज ड्यूटीज फ्रॉम वेरियस प्लेसिस हर गेदर एट द टाइम इन द असेंबली श्री जी महाराज वॉज कंटिन्यूइंग हिज डिस्कोर्स एंड आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ डिस्कोर्स श्री जी महाराज हैड आज को क्वेश्चन फॉर अ ड्यूटी इन द असेंबली श्री जी महाराज हैड पोज अ क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट बिफोर आस्किंग क्वेश्चन भगवान हैड गिवन एन एक्सप्लेनेशन एक्सप्लेनेशन रिगार्डिंग दादा खाचर कंटेम्प्ररी सिचुएशन श्री जी महाराज से नाउ इन दिस वीक दादा खाचर हैड ऑनली सर्वेंट एंड दैट सर्वेंट बिकम इल सो फॉर लास्ट टू और थ्री डेज दादा खाचर हैड टू डू ऑल हिज एक्टिविटीज हिमसेल्फ बिकॉज ही हैड नो एनी अदर सर्वेंट सो नाउ then sri ji maharaj had posed a question for duty who will be the servant of dada khachur and not only this but he had also worked to show his servant who himself ill so now who in this assembly can be able to become he means perform service of not only that the catcher but his servant also in the assembly there are so many devotees but none could queue even a smile while hearing this question but among them parvat bai was also in the assembly and parvat bai thought in his mind that this is very rare of the rare opportunity in my life to become a servant of servant of dada khachur so now let me know maharaj that i am the person who will be who will become a servant of dada khachur servant then in the assembly prod by immediately give his reply his appreciation and he agreed to become a servant of servant of dada khachur there are many other duty in the assembly but none could give this reply to maharaj and none of them agreed to become a servant of servant of dada khachur not all no doubt all of the devotees understand the glory of sri ji maharaj the glory of his paramhansas glory of dada khachar and other devotees but still none other than parvat bhai was ready to become a servant of servant of dada khachar come back and in today's our present situation in our satsang while reading the scripture or while listening the discourses from the sant we also want to become a servant means want to attain servitude in our life so that we can also be able to please sri ji maharaj but when time occurs 
most of us cannot dare to become a servant of servant of the satsang even though by listening the scriptures as well as by listening the discourses of the scriptures in this satsang we also want to become a servant but still something in our heart that will prevent us to become a servant of bhagwan servant of santo servant of theodi so today let we contemplate upon our own heart upon our own mind upon our own thought what is the point which prevent us to become a servant of bhagwan servant of santo and servant of theodi when i have pondered in my mind in my mind in my heart i have conclusion and that is we have egotistic nature we have ego in our heart we have ego in our genetics and due to this egoistic egoistic nature we cannot become a servant of servant of devotee even though we know when we behave as a servant of servant of devotees we can have many many virtues in our life in our heart by that virtues we can easily please bhagwan and santo but still we cannot behave as a servant why because we have ego in our heart this is a greatest obstacle in our spiritual path even when we perform any services any manual service in the temple in the residential hall of the sadhu at the time also we have one thought in our mind that i am a body this iness and minus means this thing this possession are mine this such kind of bad things bad nature bad thought that is the greatest obstacle to become a pure devotee so if we want to become a pure devotee we have to remove our ego from our heart so let we try just try to understand what is our duty what we can do for removing ego from our heart and for that first of all let we understand what is ego in general sense ego means iness or some nature some thought in our heart by which we can perform most of the activity in the day whether the activities of spiritual or related to the world but most of the activities run by most of the people only and only through ego but today we will try to understand ego by economy e g o we are going to understand this these three words uh, three these three letter e g o e means equality this is the main obstacle in our spiritual path our path to attain god when we perform any activity in satsang we are not alone in satsang we have many other devotees we have many other saints around us and they are also performing the same services of bhagwan santo and devotees they are performing 
the same devotion for for, for the propiti propitiation of God. They are also doing the same manual service. They are also listening the discourses of the santo, just sitting next to us. More than that, they are also like us as a human being. So, they also perform their bodily activities, their daily routine, just exactly like us. So, what happens in your mind when we perform any spiritual activity, means activity related to Bhagwan at the time? Another duty of God is also performing the same activity because He also wants to progress in the spiritual world, spiritual life. But what is our tendency? Our human tendency is like that. If the other person is performing the same job, we understand he is also like us. And this is the greatest obstacle to become a servant of that person because when we think that this is no more than mine, he is no more than me, he has no more virtues than me, he has no more status than me. And while we think over and over again this type of thought in our mind, in order to please Bhagwan, we forsake our path, our real path, and we forget to become a servant of the other devotee because we know that he is also like me, he is also like an ordinary human being. He performed his job as a satsangi, he performed this, servant, this service, this manual service, even this cleaning, the temple or any other services, but still it is his duty. And if that person is performing this service, he is not, he is not performing more than his duty. That is merely his duty and he is doing according to his duty. So he is no, much, he is no more than me because I am also performing my duty in this satsang. In this way, we cannot understand the glory of the devotee, the glory of the santo. And when we cannot understand the real glory of the devotee and santo, how can we become a servant who is the same like us? So, to removing equality from our heart, the only means we have, and that is to understand the glory of the other santo, glory of the devotees. Bhagavan says in the Vachanamrut that if we understand the real glory of Sriji Maharaj, then we automatically understand the glory of santo and glory of the devotees. In this world, just think, we have many times even experienced in our life. If any pol politician or political leader in our country and a person who is close friend of that political leader, how we behave with that person who is only the friend of that political leader? You forget this. Even just take an example of a police officer. How we behave with police officer? Because we understand his glory, we understand his greatness. And so our behavior automatically changed with him. But at the same time, 
we cannot understand the glory of Bhagwan. We understand the glory of government, but we cannot understand the glory of Bhagwan. And as we cannot understand the real glory of Bhagwan, we cannot grasp the real glory, real greatness of his santo as well as his devotees. Sriji Maharaj has described the same thing in the Vachanamrat. Bhagwan has described in the 17th Vachanamrat of Loya. Bhagwan says, if the British governor of Mumbai were seated in an assembly and if at that time a poor man were to enter that assembly but was not given a seat or welcomed in any way, would the poor man become angry with the governor? Would he feel like swearing at the governor? Not at all. Why? Because the poor man has realized the eminence of the British official. That is, he is the ruler of the land, and I am a mere pauper. Hence, he does not become upset. In this manner, if a person has realized the glory of the sun, then regardless of how much the sun scorns him, he will never become upset with the sun. In fact, if he does find a fault in anyone, he would find it in himself, but in no way would he perceive a flow in the sun. So in this way, when we understand the glory of Bhagwan, glory of Santo, and glory of the devotee, we have no any other obstacle, and we can become easily a servant of servant of servant. Of Bhagwan. More than that, when we have a nails of Bhagwan or any other thing which came in contact with Bhagwan, which we call as Prasadini Vastu, we understand those things, even the things which merely once or two in the, come in contact with Bhagwan, But we, at the time we understand the glory of that things which is sanctified by Sri Ji Maharaj and we touch our eyes. But at the time we cannot understand the glory of Santo and devotees, that the Santo and these devotees are also belongs to Bhagwan. They are also come in contact with Bhagwan. If we think in this way in our mind, then we can understand the real glory of Bhagwan, his Santo and his devotees. And by this way, gradually we can develop servitude in our heart. And finally, when we have a chance, we can easily become a servant of servant of the duty of Bhagwan. Now the next G means greatness or glory. We understand our own greatness. We understand our own glory. That I am a duty of Bhagwan. I am a greater duty than the other and so in the, when we understand our own glory our own greatness we cannot understand the real glory and greatness of the duty when we forsake our own greatness when we think for our own self that i am nothing i am nothing in the satsang and other, all, all other devotees and all other santos are far greater than me. They have a contact of Bhagwan more than me. Because you just think how we, how we can glorify the other devotees of Bhagwan, how we can understand his greatness of, 
or the devotee and other santo because you just think when we perform a mental service of bhagwan at the time not a the devotee who is just next to us a the devotee cannot understand how we perform a manual service of bhagwan and santo in our manasi similarly we cannot understand how the other devotee perform manual service of bhagwan and santo how he understand the greatness of bhagwan his santo and other devotees in his mind how we can grasp so we cannot understand a devotee whether he is a true or false merely by observing his outer behavior but when we develop in our heart a system to understand the du- greatness and glory of the devotees in general we should understand all that the devotees are greater than me they all performing more services to bhagwan the performing more and heavier to please bhagwan than me and i am nothing in this way when we change our nature to understand from understand our own glory to understand the glory and greatness of others in this way we can also remove our nature to understand our own, our own glory and greatness and we gradually develop our we, we can maintain our nature in such a way that we can automatically observe glory of the devotees and last o o means or wise or or behaving in this characteristic sometimes we not most of us but some of us has this kind of nature when the another person is understand the glory of bhagwan santo and other hari bhakto at the time we sometimes try to make him stop to understand the glory of devotees and santo more than us because as he understand more glory than us so he definitely become a uh, more dear to bhagwan and santo because he is definitely perform more service than us he become more servant than us so in this way our ego become hurt and to maintain ego in our heart what is our next step what is our behavior with that person we stop to him to understand more glory of santo and devotee merely just king nutrition to our ego we prevent that duty we seize that duty to understand more glory of santo and devotee this is our most wildest nature in our heart we should immediately remove such kind of our bad nature otherwise this will become a greatest obstacle in our life in our life to god in our journey to god and even we fall from the sasang fallacy so this e g o means ego first equality second our own glory and third one is obstinacy or over rising this when with this when we remove these three characteristic from our heart then 
we definitely become a uh, stone statue of bhagwan and gradually we also can develop in our heart servitude nature of servitude for and we not only become a servant of bhagwan servant of santo but we also can ready to become a servant of servant of duty of bhagwan because this is the most necessary thing in our spiritual life to become a servant of duties of bhagwan when we acquire the servitude in our heart we have lots many other virtues ready to enter in our heart but to acquire all other virtues in our life we have to become a servant of servant of bhagwan so let us try from today not try to become a servant of servant of servant of bhagwan but just try to removing ego egoistic nature from our heart servitude automatically come in our heart if we have no ego in our heart and bhagwan is ready to giving us all other good virtues if we have servitude in our heart hari krishna maharaj ni je श्रीपतिम श्रीधर सर्वेवर भक्तिधरमात्मज वासुदेव हरिमाधव केशव कामद कारण स्वामीनारायण नीलकंठम भज हरिकृष्ण महाराज नीज संत कृपाए सुख उपजे संत कृपा थी सर काम संत कृपा थी पामी ए बोरन पुरुषोत्तम धाम काम दुदा कल्पतरु पारस चिंता मनि चार संत समान ते एक नहीं में मन मा करो विचार संत समान ते एक नहीं में मन मा करो विचार हरि कृष्ण महाराज निजे गणेशाम महाराज निजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान निजे सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी आर बिलवेड भगवान स्वामी नारायण बाय द हैंड्स ऑफ हु we want to take liberation by our divine and dear puja guru ji and all of you devotees my humble jay swami narayan the earth the this is the name of the planet that we live on the earth is the only planet that supports life in this solar system as so scientists say it's the only planet that life has been discovered on where humans and other animals live in a natural and comfortable environment the earth is small compared to the other planets like saturn jupiter neptune even the great sun but the sun the earth's efficiency is far beyond any of the planets the earth's surface is 29% and the other 71% consists of water but We don't want to just stay on the surface 
of Earth, or even just talk about the atmosphere, or the water, or just the outside. We want to go inside the Earth today. The Earth has four layers. When we go inside, there's four layers. The four layers of Earth are the crust, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. In the same exact way, in our satsang, in our religion, the Swami Narayan sect, we have four types or four levels of satsang. Number one, the level of satsang through the body. Number th two, the level of satsang through the senses. Number three, the level of satsang through the mind. And lastly, number four, the deepest and the most effective is the level of satsang through the soul. Today, what we're going to do is compare the earth's surface from the inside and we're going to compare it with the levels of satsang. Just like how there's four layers of earth, there's also four levels of satsang. Each one goes similar hand to hand, but through taking the divine incidents of Bhagwan, his saints and devotees, we're going to see, we're going to learn, we're going to witness the levels of satsang and what level we are at right now and what level we should get to or reach at the end. So starting from number one, the level of satsang through the body. Well, that starts with the crust. The crust of the earth is what we're sitting on right now, what buildings are made on, pretty much the top part. The first layer consists of about 10 miles. The crust is about 10 miles of earth down, of rock and loose material. Underneath the continents, the crust is almost three times as thick at, as it is under the ocean. Now the crust we can see, yet we can't see because it's so deep, 10 miles down. Yet, it's such an important factor because without the crust, the earth would be overheated. We wouldn't be able to survive here. Yet, when we look at it from the satsang perspective, the level of satsang through the body is very important. It's the easiest to do, obviously. But what do I mean? Well, when one practices satsang through the body, for example, wearing a kanti, doing the tilak chanlo, doing puja, not eating onion and garlic, following simple rules pertaining to bodily activities, physically. This is called satsang through the body. And this is 25% of satsang. Just like how there's four levels, each one is 25%. However much you do satsang and however much deeper you go, that's the higher percent percentile you receive. Just like how in school, a 90 to 100 is an A. A 95 and up is an A+. Plus. You go down even more, an 89 to an 80 is a B. You go even further down, a 79 to a 70 is a C. In the same way, our percentile can be also weighed here by how much satsang we have performed in our life so far. Just think, while this lecture is going on, have I performed satsang through only the body? Or have I gotten even deeper and my satsang is in the sense organs? Or even deeper, is satsang in my mind 
or the deepest level is satsang in my soul. When you think about this, you can actually find and exactly where you are in the satsang. And through that, you can develop more and progress more. So saying this, even just, let's just think, in school, even in college, when you are at a 101 course, meaning a 101 class, for example, biology 101, no teacher, no professor is going to teach you anything about biology 301, meaning the third level of biology, the most difficult. They're only going to teach you what is in 101. You cannot even learn. Your capacity is not able to maintain or grasp the level of knowledge of level 301. So the teacher gives you small knowledge at a time and then builds your stamina enough so that you can understand and grasp the point of biology 301 when you re when you reach that class but if you were taught straight it would be very difficult in the same way after entering this satsang fellowship this religion one cannot expect to develop satsang in the soul right away the deepest part we're going to learn each and every level what it is exactly how it can be done, how it can be performed, examples, even divine incidents from Bhagwan saints and devotees' life, so you can better grasp what kind of satsang is needed for you. But not only that, we have to think more on the basis of when I enter the satsang, I am new. So first, I should do or I should start with the level of the body. After that's completed, 100%, then I should move on to the sense organs. It's a one-by-one one process. That's why we're going to start with the level of the body. Now, as I was going back, the examples, Kanti, Tilak Chanlo, doing puja, wearing dhoti sal, this should be all considered to be the level of the satsang uh, through the body. Now, by that, I'm reminded of a story. In the time of Sri Ji Maharaj, there was a devotee by the name of Mulji. Now, Mulji was a great robber at that time. And he robbed many, many people, just like Jobam Buggy before in his time when he was Daikat. He robbed and hurt many, many people. In the same way, Mulji also robbed people for a living. This was his job. That's what he did. But just one time he came into contact with Sriji Maharaj, something else occurred. He saw the Amnan, the great glow of Bhagwan. He saw the miraculous powers of Sriji Maharaj at that time. And he decided to let go of his bad habits of robbing people, hurting people. And he decided to become a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So, Mulji started doing the Tilak Chanlo, started performing puja every day in the morning, and also wore a kanti. And from the outside, anyone could tell that Mulji was a robber before, but now he's a devotee. Why? Because he started doing the Tilak Chanlo, he started doing the puja. He started wearing a kanti. So from the outside perspective, everyone is very, very fond of him because everyone considers him to be a devotee. Everyone sees that what kind of change, what kind of leap he's made from a very bad perspective to a very good perspective in such a short time because of Sri Ji Maharaj's miraculous powers by seeing that Bhagwan is so great, Mulji changed his life around. So from the outside Everyone was very fond of Mulji. Everyone was very fond of him. So everyone thought that Mulji is such a great devotee that they even gave examples to other people that who were doing bad habits that 
Look at Mulji, he was a robber before. But now, by having contact with Bhagwan, he is such kind of devotee. So you should also follow. But one time, many, many female devotees from a different village came to have the darshan of Sriji Maharaj. And they brought with them gold, coins, money, many, many jewels, gems for Bhagwan. And they surrendered it to Bhagwan. Now, seeing so, much, so many riches, Mulji's mind got tempted. Because remember, he was a robber before. So at that time, he had to actually work hard, think of schemes and plans to rob people. So it was difficult. Sometimes he got away. Sometimes he couldn't get anything. Sometimes he got much, but at his feet, he saw so much gold, so much jewelry, so much coins, so many men, much money, that his mind got tempted again. So a desire raised in his mind to acquire the gold and jewels by any means possible. But obviously Sriji Maharaj was omniscient. He was all-knowing. So, he saw that Mulji's cruel, cruel intentions were very difficult for him and it would be very hard for him if he had to bear such kind of pain. So he told all the female devotees to take back the golden jewels and hide it somewhere so that Mulji would not get a hand of these possessions. So the female devotees, as commanded, hid the jewelry and the gold and the coins and money somewhere else. But Mulji was a cunning thief. So he found everything. And he found it and he packed it in a box and he left. He left Bhagwan, he left everything because he was a thief. So he started to run away. As he was going away and away from Bhagwan and all these devotees, Bhagwan gave him darshan right at, the, right at a road, right in front of his path. And he told Mulji that what's in the box? Mulji said, I am preparing food for you. This is food for you, Bhagwan. The box has food. Maharaj says to Mulji, is it truly food, Mulji, or is it actually the gold coins that you have stolen from the, the female devotees who have brought it for me? Mulji confessed everything because he knew that Bhagwan pretty much confronted him and it was the truth. So he opened the box. He showed that, Bhagwan, it's my fault. I lied to you and I ran away and my bad habit of stealing has come back again. Please forgive me. But obviously Bhagwan forgave Mulji. But the story, the significance, or you can say what we have to learn from this story is that Mulji only had satsang through the body, meaning from the outside he did the lakchanlo. From the outside he wore ganti. From the outside he did puja. But truly, satsang had not sunk in deeper down through the sense organs, through the mind, or even to the soul. And due to that, just by seeing gold, his mind got tempted. But if satsang was truly developed in his heart, then, or in his soul, then he wouldn't have gotten a desire to steal the gold because he would have known that Bhagwan is omniscient. Bhagwan knows everything. And I don't need to steal anything because everything that I have is right in front of me. The supreme creator, destroyer, and sustainer of everything, the one who can give me everything and anything is right in front of me. Then why do I need to steal? But he didn't develop these kind of thoughts because his satsang was 
only 25% complete. Just like that, how the crust is seen on the surface of the earth. But truly, we don't know what is inside of the earth. Only when we explore deeper down, we can find the true, you can say, nectar. In the same way, in satsang, it's a similar perspective. Moving on. Now, we've talked about level one, which is satsang through the body. Now, let's go a little deeper down. As we enter the mantle of the earth, it extends to about 1,800 miles, and it is thick, solid rock. Now, the mantle is very, very unique. Why? Because 85% of the total weight, the mass of earth, is in the mantle. It's 1,800 miles, but it's so dense and it weighs a lot. So, in a similar fashion, level two is the sense organs, meaning the senses, the eyes, the ears, the tongue, the skin, and the nose, meaning from the eyes we can see, from the ears we can listen, from the tongue we can taste, from the skin we can feel, and from the nose we can smell. In the Vachnamrit, Kadra, first chapter, 32nd Vachnamrit, Shijimarad says that just like how a person in the world who has desires for the Panchavishes, the five sense object organs, have desire for the Panchavishes, cannot live without Panchavishes. In the same way, the Anadi Mukt, the liberated soul, cannot live without the Panchavishes. But both of their Panchavishes are different. The person of the world engages in eating tasty food, looking at bad, bad things, doing bad things, listening to songs that are bad, that have swears and talk about things that are not good. But when we look at the other side, the devotee of God, the Anadi Mukta of God, cannot live without listening to the Katha of Bhagwan, without tasting the prasad offered to Bhagwan first and then eating himself, without even having the darshan of Bhagwan. He cannot even live. It's a similar fashion, but the mode has just changed. In the same way, level two is satsang through the sense organs. Now, there's another story about a robber. His name is Jogidas Kuman. Now, Jogidas Kuman was also a very bad robber in the time of Bhagwan. But what had happened, what his story is, is that he robbed people for a living, but while he was traveling through the forest one day, he saw a young woman there. And he saw the woman and he suddenly became attracted to her. His eyes pulled to her. her his eyes were magnetic, magnetically probably attracted to her. And through that, he became very disturbed afterwards. And he became very hurt. He became so much hurt that he thought to himself that my mother has named me Jogidas means the, ser the servant of saints, the saint's servant, then how could I have done such a bad thing by looking at such a woman that I don't even know in a bad way? So to punish himself, he took red chili powder and put it in his eyes. His eyes became, began to burn intensely with pain. The lesson to learn from this story is that you know, Jogi Das, he was not a devotee of Bhagwan, but through his story, his eyes, 
he punished them because they looked in a bad manner. But what he's showing is that he had control over what he was doing. And when Sriji Maharaj learned about Jogidas's actions, he became very pleased that he controlled his sense organs and he blessed Jogidas Kuman. And by the blessings of Bhagwan, by the grace of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, he became and stayed a celibate all his life. Now, level two is a little more difficult to reach. Level one is easy. Why? Because you're doing everything on the outside. But when we look at level two, it's hard to control our sense organs. It's very difficult. Why? We live in such a world where everything around us has something to do which is not God-related more often. Only if you became a saint and lived in a temple between four walls and worshipped God, then you would be pretty much safe. But for the person who is outside the temple, for the person who only comes to temple once a week, for the other six days, you can even say for the other six and a half days, because temple is only for four or five hours. But for that much time period, for that much time duration, the outside world is polluted, corrupted with many, many bad things. How could it be avoided? How could it be not seen? How could it be not heard of? How could one not taste it? How could one not feel it? How can one not smell it? It's so difficult. It's like saying, for example, that you diving into a pool without getting wet. How is it possible? Even if you dive into a pool, there's a 100% chance, obviously, you're going to get wet. But Staying beyond that water, that's the true way of a satsangi. Diving into a pool, yet not getting wet. That's the characteristic of a devotee. What do I mean by this? Of course, you have to stay in the world. Of course, you have to go to school, go to college, get a job, work, everything. You have to do everything because you live in the world. If you, you, you cannot live between four walls and expect everything to come to you. You have to actually go outside, explore, take the opportunity and work and make a living through that. But a true devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan engages in everything but does not get bound. Of course, one has to be very, very fearful. One has to be very, very... You can say vigilant, aware of what to engage in and what not to engage in. For example, when we are watching TV, of course, everyone watches TV. Sure. But what to watch, what not to watch. This is the food for the eyes. Things you can watch. Discovery Channel. History Channel something educational that you can actually get something out of even sports nothing is harmful for that but other things they hurt they hurt your you can say mind and your senses and through your senses your soul is becoming polluted if you do not watch proper things number 2 listening listening to katha is the characteristic of a devotee. Whereas listening to songs which are not appropriate or any other things which are talks of the world, this is not a characteristic of a devotee. So food for the ears is listening to the katha for a devotee of God. Number three, skin, feeling. Feeling or having 
the touch of Bhagwan, the idol of Bhagwan, his saints. This is the characteristic of a devotee. On the other hand, feeling other things, this is not the characteristic of a devotee. Number four, smelling. Smelling flowers offered to Bhagwan is the characteristic of a devotee. Whereas smelling other things, bad things, things that are not offered to God. What I mean by bad things is things that are not offered to God. This is not the characteristic of a devotee. And number five, the hardest one, you can say, is tasting. Tasting food or eating food, which is first offered to God, not only that, but which is actually verified by Bhagwan, which is not what does not consume onion, garlic, meat, eggs, fish, any kind of living creature, anything like that, pure vegetarian, which is made within by your family members, your mother, your father, whoever, not by outside people, not by people who actually do not take a shower or do not even pray to Bhagwan. Not by those kind of people, but by devotees of Bhagwan, other devotees of Bhagwan, your family members, and then offered to God first, and then consumed. This is the characteristic of a devotee. Now, level two is very hard, but by completing level two, 50% of satsang is completed right there and then. Also, we can see many, many times I've given the example of Jivaram Joshi we'll talk about him today again because it's such a prime and perfect example and he was a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan Jivaram Joshi was a, a staunch devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan as all of you know I'll just say it in short so you understand my point but Jivaram Joshi he was such a devotee that he followed the niyams, meaning the vows, meaning everything, uh, the, the commands of Bhagwan very, very staunchly, very firmly, you can say. So at one time, in his village, there was many, many other Brahmins who lived there, the Brahmin caste. There was many, many Brahmins who lived there, but they were all against him and Bhagwan Swaminarayan. They were against him because they were, he worshipped Bhagavan Swaminarayan. So what they plotted to do was they plotted to hold a grand feast and feed all the Brahmins. Jiyaram Joshi was also a Brahmin too. So they decided to hold such a, fe uh, a, a festival. And what they did was those corrupted Brahmins told the village head that we're going to put onion and garlic inside the food. But what you have to do is you have to call Jivaram so that he would come and eat this food and he would also be corrupted. So the village had went and told Jivaram, Jivaram please attend this festival. So as commanded by the village head, having respect for such a high stature person, he decided to go, and he sat down to take the food, and right there, when the food was being served, he smelled onion and garlic in the food. So right away, he stood up. All the Brahmins said, what are you doing, Jiyaram? Start eating. We held this grand festival, and you're disturbing it. Everyone's time is being spoiled. Everyone was having a good time until you stood up. Eat this food. Humbly, Jivaram folded his hands and said, Please forgive me. I cannot eat this. I am the devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So, I cannot engage in this food because if I do, I am violating my Bhagwan's rules. So, please forgive me. All, all the Brahmins, especially the village head, became furious and said, we'll give you two options. Option one, if you do not eat this food, 
Or if you eat this food, we will let you stay here. And option two, if you, don't, if you do not eat the food, then you will have to leave immediately without any belongings with your family. Jiraram said proudly and very firmly that I will take option two. And he left his whole village without any belongings with his family, left his property behind, left his land behind, his home, everything, and went to where Bhagwan was, told Bhagwan everything. Bhagwan became so pleased upon Jiram that he gave him blessings. The story is very, very simple, yet practically doing this, practically in the world, when food, tasty food comes at you, but which contains onion or garlic, or when something attractive, something that you really like to see comes to your eyes, you reject it because right away you think that I am a devotee of Bhagavan Swaminarayan. How could I do this? This is satsang through the sense organs. And this is considered to be 50% of satsang. Just like how the mantle is 1,800 feet in distance, 1,800 feet deep, and it is 85% of the weight of the earth in the same way. In Gadara first chapter, 18th chapter, Bhagwan says, by keeping the Gnan Indriyas, these are considered to be Gnan Indriyas, the sense organs, which I have named, the eyes, the ears, the skin, all these, by keeping them pure, meaning by keeping them pure, meaning engaging in godly God-related activities and not engaging in, in, in worldly related activities, by keeping them pure, you will also become a mukt. Bhagwan has said this in the Vachnam, Gurdara, first chapter 18. So it is Bhagwan's Vachan, it is Bhagwan's words that are saying this. So all we have to do is apply. And applying is a step that is without a doubt necessary to progress. So, saying this, this is the first part of the four levels of satsang. Level one we discussed is through the body, and level two is through the sense organs. Next week, we'll learn about level three and level four, which will complete our 100% satsang. And when we have become 100% satsangi, then Bhagwan we would become so pleased upon us and we would be able to stay in the divine abode of Akshardham blissfully, eternally. That's why we are doing all this. That's why we're making an effort to become 100% ekantik. Hare Krishna Maharaj Nijay.